time where he had the opportunity to represent Jesus, but ended up doing so. And that is found in Luke chapter 22, verse 54, it says, So they arrested him and led him to the high priest's home. And Peter followed at a distance. The guards lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it. And Peter joined them there. A servant girl noticed him in the firelight and began staring at him. Finally, say finally. She said, this man was one of Jesus' followers. But Peter denied it. Say he denied it. Woman, he said, I don't even know him. After a while, someone else looked at him and said, you must be one of them. No, man, I'm not, Peter re retorted. About an hour later, someone else ins insisted this must be one of them because he is a Galilee too. But Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. At that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly, the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even knew me. And Peter left the courtyard weeping bitterly. Let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes this evening. I pray, Father God, that you will remove me. Let it be you that speaks through me tonight. That you will begin to deliver a word through my life that will penetrate the hearts of your people. As well, speak to me. In the name of Jesus, we say amen and amen. Thank you, Brother Matt. I appreciate it. And uh, in that moment where the rooster crowed, Peter realized what, had ha what he had done. He failed to represent Jesus. Say, well, I need you guys to talk to me this evening. We need to start off this year right. I need you guys to talk to me this evening. So he failed to represent Jesus. My point one is don't pass up opportunities to represent Jesus. Listen, Peter declared he would do something on the behalf of Jesus but didn't follow through. Do you know anybody that says something and never follows through? Don't point them out. He might be in the room or she might be in the room. It was at the last supper of Jesus when he was talking to the disciples. He was just feeding and, and teaching and sharing what, what was about to come. And there at the table, he was telling, uh, uh, telling that Peter will, be, will turn away on account of him. But Peter didn't believe it. The scripture says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you, each of you, like wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you. It says, Simon, that you, your faith shall not fail. So when you have rep repented and turned to me again, strengthen your bro brothers. Peter said, Lord, I am ready to go to prison with you, even die to die with you. But Jesus said, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you ever knew me. That is in Luke 22, 31, right before Peter denied Jesus. See, Peter had the right desire and the right intentions. How many of you guys ever had a right, right desire or right intention before? But his execution was weak. Say, well, we could have the best desire and the best intention at heart, but that doesn't mean nothing if we don't execute it. If we don't take action behind what we're saying, if we said we're going to do something for Jesus and we didn't follow through last year, I declare that this, is be, this will be the year that you begin to say, I'm going to do something for Jesus and that you will perfect execution, that you will rally behind what you're saying. Can I get an amen this evening? If you said something uh, on the behalf of Jesus and it slipped through your hands, then this has to be the year that you make the decision that this year I will be a, I'll be the person that will follow through through the words that I say to God. This uh, that will not that, that nothing will stand in the way of me presenting or or, or chasing after the things that I, I honor to God with my life. See, listen, the third wave. 
the gang, God's anointing our generation, the men and women. We have to be men of our word. We have to be women of our word. We have to be a third wave, a third waver of our word because a, a person that is a, that's a man of his word or a woman of, his, uh, of her word is a person that's dependable, that's a person that's reliable, that somebody could count on. Can I get an amen? And as we begin to move forward in the ministry, I want to raise up a gang that our pastors could look in the third wave and they can look young women and young men that are reliable, that are dependable, that when they say they have pastors back, they are right there alongside it. Why? Because they're men of their word. They're, they're women of their, their word. Can I get an amen this evening? So this year has to be a year that we follow through. Say follow through. That we follow through with our dedications and our commitments towards God. That if we're a young adult, that we're going to be a young adult for that, that will slain for the honor and glory for Jesus Christ. That we're going to be a student that, that, that is not fearful or, or timid of the world, but will be willing to stand in the midst of the crowd and represent Jesus. Can I get an amen? I don't know about you, but I remember back in the day, man, we weren't. Fear wasn't, wasn't part of our vocabulary. I remember growing up in the gang. Fear wasn't part of our vocabulary. I remember shouting on top of cars. I, I hear those testimonies. That was my generation. The generation was, that was fearful of, uh, of shouting in a, in a Walmart, shouting in a mall place, that was shouting in a, in a grocery store. There's a viral uh, 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 people that repost all the time. It's me, James, and, and, a, and another individual that were in, the, in Walmart, and we're shouting. We're blasting. Every, every one of us stopped in the aisle, and we begin to shout and, and scream for the honor and glory of Jesus. Jesus Christ, but do we still have any young people, young adults that are willing to stand in the midst of the crowd, no matter what, uh, what, what temptation or whatever discouragement might be in their way, that they're willing to represent Jesus, no matter the cost, no matter the price. Can I get amen this evening? This year has to be a year that we will young, we'll be young people that will honor our word. Peter had a great intention. Peter had a great desire. But it means nothing without action behind it. Number two is let Jesus be the measuring rod of our convictions. It says, at that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly, the Lord's word flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you would deny three times that you even knew me. And Peter left the courtyard weeping bitterly. It was when Jesus looked. It was when Jesus looked, when Peter remembered and understood what he had done. Peter's level of conviction was measured by Jesus, and he knew that he failed, so he wept bitterly. It said that it's, it, it is said that that was a posture of repentance for Peter. When he wept bitterly, was a was a posture of him repenting to God that he knew that he failed and he didn't honor his word. Can I get an amen? See, we know Peter as a great man of God, but there is even moments when they're great men of God and great women of God that have failures in their lives. But there has to be also a, a maturity in our life where we come into a place of repentance, knowing that, yeah, we failed, but those failures are not going to hold us down to continue to do better next time. Can I get an amen? Because if you look in the story about Peter's life, he was a moment that he denied Jesus three times. But when the spirit of God fell on the book of Acts, he began to stand bold in front of the same people that he denied Jesus with. And he preached a message that delivered and 3,000 people got saved. Why? Because he said, never again will I begin to deny Jesus. I will stand on his solid word. I will be a man of my word. I will represent Jesus. Can I get an amen this evening? I believe that was a building block for him to secede. I believe that was a moment in his life that he reflect on. That he would look back to and, and, and that he felt the hurt in that moment where every time he went through seasons in his life, every time he, he went through uh, 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 struggles in his life, I believe that he will reflect on the time that that, uh, that that time that he denied Jesus and it made him feel, man, that that hurt him, that that he disappointed Jesus. And, and, and that I believe that that was a moment he said, I will never feel like that again. I will begin to just continue moving forward for the honor and glory of God, no matter the uh, no matter. No matter where God leads me, no matter where God takes me, that I will represent Jesus. 
in a, in a good light. In order for you to be better next year, in 2023, you have to look at your failures in areas that you probably didn't represent Jesus the way that you should have. In places where you might be in your workplace where you should have said something, but you didn't. Where you're around your family and they're, they're talking this and that, and you're, you're the light that could shine through, the, through it all, but you step back a little bit. Are you with me this evening? I don't know where it is, where you failed. You can reflect back on. It's not, a discouraging, uh, it's not a discouraging message, but it's a message to catapult you to something greater because you have to begin to reflect on certain areas in your life that, you know what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to desi- deny Jesus in my, in my actions. I'm not going to deny Jesus through my words. I'm not going to deny Jesus through, through what I do. Can I get an amen? amen. I, be, I believe that this has, has to be one of those moments in Peter's life where he will continue just to reflect on if we want, re- we want to see results, then we need to hold on to our convictions when it comes to the things of the Lord. I have a video analogy. I usually don't show video analogies, but if you turn the light off, then you can show the video analogy. Yo, 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 yo. You what literally just giving us a ticket. Why? Because you're parked on the double yellow line. But we're... And it says don't park at any time. We're not parked. So if you're we're not waiting. Par- you're waiting? Yes, waiting. Okay. So, are you waiting whilst you're parked or whilst you're driving? What is it? We're, wa- <laughs> what is it? So we're waiting while we're stationary. Of, stationary. You can either be driving or parked, right? No, we're stationary. We're not stationary. Yeah. Stationary as in packed. The car is packed in stationary mode. Yes. So, you are packed. No, 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 no. no. My uh, listen, foot's on the brake. Listen, Mr. Man in the back, look, look at you, giving me all the attitude. You are not in the conversation. <laughs> yeah, not but like, we're not on the WA line, though. We're on the curb. Even worse. Imagine now it's a pedestrian. Remember, I want you, when you're driving home with that ticket in the car, I want you to remember, can't you see this sign? It's a double yellow line. Don't do it again. We're in a living crisis right now. Living yeah? crisis. I live in a one room house. Exactly. That, that, sounds like a you problem. Um, that sounds like a you problem. That sounds like hey, a me problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you having a ticket sounds like a you problem. <laughs> so you pay for it. You broke the law, so now you face it. What, and you didn't buy parking right behind us? I'm thinking in first place, it doesn't matter where I park. <laughs> oh, so, I park okay. where I like, you can't. You can't park on the yellow line. And you oh, so you think you're line. above the law? I am above the... I am the law. You're not the law. I am the law. You're not the law. I am the law. Hence why I'm giving you tickets. So you will pay for it, and you will suffer. I thought it was funny, but it reminded me that I feel like sometimes this is how many of us fight with our convictions. Like we know we aren't supposed to park somewhere and it's obvious yet we make excuses while we're parking there. Have you ever parked in certain areas in your life where you feel like, man, you know what? I have my foot on the brake, but that doesn't matter. You're still stationed. You're still parked there. You're making excuses. Why? But it doesn't matter why you're there. And I, and I uh, felt like, man, sometimes what happens in our lives is that we have to allow convictions to steer us. We have to be obedient to our convictions, not battle with our convictions, because God will lead. God gives the Holy Spirit to give us conviction. And, and we're obedient to the convictions of God. It will lead us to places where we won't suffer. Does that make sense? He says, he says, uh, he says that living space is, is your problem. And he says, well, that ticket is your problem, right? And says, I gave you a ticket and you're going to suffer, right? It was because you made the choice. You read all the signs. You know the Bible. You know what you need to do. But yet you still allow yourself to park in somewhere you're not supposed to. And we have to allow our convictions to steer us in the right directions. We can't pass up the signs. And what happens is that convictions will lead us in a couple places. Conviction will lead us to purify our hearts and our motives. Write that down. In Psalms 19.9, it says, how can a young person stay pure by obeying his word? You can turn me down a little bit. I have this feedback. It's messing me up a little bit. The word of God says, is, uh, the word of God says, how can a young person stay pure but obeying, the, obeying, your, uh, obeying his word, obeying your word? So obeying your word, the word of God is a guideline. We're not above it. 
but it's the thing that will keep us between the lines. The word of God says that the word is the lamp to our feet. And I don't know if anyone has ever tried to walk in the dark before. Has anybody ever tried to walk in the dark before? Well, I have two kids. So when I put them to sleep, it's pitch black. And sometimes when I try to sneak out, <laughs> I forget they leave everything on the floor. And so it's hard for me to see. It's hard for anybody to see in the dark. But when there's certain things that are in the dark that you can't see, you get hurt. And that's the same thing with life. We are in, in, in a dark world. We're in a dark world, and sometimes there's certain things that are, are laid out before us to entrap us. Temptation, sin, right, uh, 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 bad relationships, whatever it is, they begin to just come in. And, 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 and if we're not careful, we're not allowing the word of God to guide our life, we can step into things that can hurt us. But the word of God is a lamp to our feet. And so when the word of God is a lamp to our feet, we're able to see certain things that we might not see. That if we didn't have the lamp to our feet, that we could have been hurt. We could have fell into. Matter of fact, I got a blindfold and I want to bring up a couple chairs. Who wants to volunteer to walk blind? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> word of God, the conviction will lead us to a, a purified heart and right motives. Hold on to that word, Psalms 19.9, 119, 9. How can a young person stay pure? By obeying the word. Number two, it says conviction will help us tame our tongue. Say, well, tame our tongue. Say things we're not supposed to say. Can I get an amen? Because some of us want to say what we want to say. I'm going to say it anyways. <laughs> but the word of God shows us and tells us that we have to tame our tongue. Ephesians 4.29, it says, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. The word of God in Matthew 15.11 says, not that goes into your mouth that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. The scripture also says, whatever is in your heart, uh, you're, you're, you, you will speak. Can I get an amen? And that's something that we have to be careful for because whatever comes out of your mouth, whatever flows out of your mouth is actually flowing from your heart. That's why the word of God says, uh, that's why I, I've made point one to be, have a purified heart and right motives. Because if you don't have a purified heart, then things are going to come out of you that are not godly. And if we want to be a representative of who God is, if we want to represent Jesus in places that need Jesus, then we have to learn how to tame our tongue. We have to learn how to purify our hearts and, and, and begin to do things with right motives that we're not doing with doing it with the wrong intentions or a wrong agenda. But we're doing it because uh, uh, we uh, we truly honor and glorify Jesus in what we do. And when we do those things, we have to be careful to tame our tongue. I don't know if you've ever been in situations where you just get riled up. Well, I'm the only one. <laughs> and then things start going into your mind. Don't look at me like you don't know. I'm talking. You get placed in situations where things start going in your mind and, and, and it starts running rapid, right? The word of God says an out of mind is a devil playground. And if we're not careful and we can allow the enemy just to put thoughts in our minds that are not godly, and eventually those thoughts that are in our minds starts getting to our hearts and those things will start to develop a character in our life. It starts di diminishing the godly character into a worldly character. What you thought was dead is no, lo no longer dead because you're putting life into it. What you, you, what you buried, the old man, you start giving him life and that old man starts coming back. Am I the only one? Yeah. Does that make sense what I'm saying this evening? And that's something that we have to be careful to watch, watch your environment, the environment that you're in, that you're representing Jesus. You're not, you're not the same person that you used to be. You're not, you're not the same person that you used to be. You're somebody that's brand new. You're somebody that, that God has called because Jesus called Peter. He's not the old person that he used to, he used to be. He was somebody that, that walked and followed Jesus closely. And we, as people, as believers, as this church, we follow Jesus as close as we can be. And we're a representative of who it is. And a lot of times the world has a misconception of what Christianity is. It's because people are not careful of taming the tongue. They can't tell between a Christian and a worldly person because there's no conviction. 
And if you want to see progress in your life, you have to allow conviction to guide you. So it could purify your heart, give you the right motives, and teach you how to speak in front of people. And number three is conviction will keep you focused. And this is my last point. I wasn't going to preach too long, but hopefully you guys got something. I believe that in 2023, we have to own our moments. We have to own moments, right? I believe that last year, there's, if you could reflect on last year, there's probably moments in your life that, that, that you didn't capitalize on moments that you could have represented Jesus. Can you be honest this evening? And if we want to, we, uh, uh, the, gang, the gang leadership, the team, we want to break 100 by the end of this quarter. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Only some of you excited. I want to see 100 young people, young adults and students inside the gang giving God honor, giving God glory, that is shouting and screaming. And I believe that we can hit that. Last week, we almost hit 70 people. We're right there. 70 young adults and students, we're right there. Say, we're right there. But we don't just want to bring numbers. We want to bring soldiers. We want to bring people that will represent Jesus. We don't come here as a patty cake ministry and then go back home and do nothing. No, we're a ministry that lives and breathes the word that we study and we learn to be a representative of Jesus is. So when we encounter people in the world, they don't get a misconception of what Christianity is. But they see an anointing. They see a hunger. They see a thirst. They see a, a desire. And they begin to look at you and they say man there's something different about you and what's the difference is is that you're representing who Jesus really is and that's what we want a church is only contagious is is, as much as we represent who Jesus is everywhere Jesus went people followed Jesus because they wanted to know who Jesus was a crowd will follow hundreds and, and thousands will meet up and see him. Why? Because they knew the, the authenticity of who Jesus was. And that's what people are attracted to. Authenticity, not fakeness. Can I get an amen? Not people that is fake, that, that's faking the funk. But we're people that is authentic. Do I have any gang warriors, any gang girls that understand that we serve the Lord because we serve the Lord? That we don't just come here and and say, I come to church. And when we say I'm victory outreach, it means I'm victory outreach. What does victory outreach mean? Man, I'm a disciple. I'm passionate for God. That's why when we wear gang gear, expansion starts with me. When we represent our our church, it's not because we're honoring, uh, but we're we're, we're taking pride in the church, uh, but we're we're representing uh, who God is within our ministry and what God is doing in our lives and what God is doing in our ministry. Can I get an amen? Man, our ministry is a ministry of disciples. If you don't know, our ministry is a ministry of disciples. That's why it's so hard for people to stay in our ministry. Why? Because a disciple, it requires much. Can I get an amen? The word of God tells the young, uh, the young rich ruler to let go of everything. If you want to come and follow me, he was telling them, if you want to be a disciple, it requires much. And our ministry says, man, it requires much. That's why you see Gabby saying, you know what? I'm going to the UTC Amsterdam. I'm letting go of my career. I'm letting to go on my family. You see Johnny going to UTC Amsterdam. Why? Because we're raising up disciples that understand it requires much. Conviction will steer your life. I believe it. Conviction will keep you focused. That's my last point. Conviction will keep you focused. Conviction will keep you focused. If you let the word of God guide your life, The Holy Spirit guide your life. You have a purified heart and the right motives of what you're doing. And then when you encounter certain seasons in your life, the old man won't speak, but godly things will speak. You won't be a discouragement, but you'll be an encouragement. You'll be somebody that wants uh, that people want to be around. When you're going through something and you're struggling, they still see the joy of the Lord in your spirit. Can I get an amen? You still, the people who look at you and they know that you're going through something, you're going through a season, but yet you're still joyful, you're still praising, you're still celebrating, you're still lifting, you're still shouting, you still have a smile on your face, you're still in position, you're still greeting people saying, man, God loves you, and then and then people wonder, why are you, why, why are you uh, so excited when you're going through a season? Because of Jesus. When 
you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, those things just start coming out of you. Does that make sense? Reminds me of Paul and Silas, man. Paul and Silas were in the, in, in the jail cell, but a jail cell, right? They were bound, they were chained, but what, what came out of them wasn't, man, this sucks. They didn't say, man, this is, man, this stinks, man. We serve Jesus and, and we still we're stuck here. No, what came out of them was praise. Because when, it, when you're authentic for Jesus, it just comes out of you. When you're going through a season of financial struggle, it doesn't come out. Uh, a negativity doesn't come out of you. Yeah, it might, might plunder in your mind here and there. But what comes out of you, man, God's going to come through. That, that the jo- uh, God is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Can I get an amen? Yeah, there will be moments where you, man, this, this, is, this is discouraging. But then you look at the bigger picture. You take a step back. And then you understand that, you know what? God has brought me so far that I cannot deny the goodness of the Lord. Because he has brought me from season to season. He has took me to level to level and he has not left me can I get an amen conviction will keep you focused conviction will keep you focused they will, you begin to see things man you begin to see the vision you see the bigger picture you see man it's not just about me but it's about my family that needs saving it's about it's about my friends that need saving it's about my co-workers that need saving it's not about me it's about it's much more about me it's about my children being saved it's not not, not my children going to become a drug addict or or a gang member or or, or doing the things that I used to do but God that uh, it's about them being raised up in the things of the Lord can I get an amen and, and that's what conviction does it keeps you focused on the bigger picture, it will guide you and direct you. I don't know about you, but how many of us are, how many of us still have things that we need to take back from the enemy? Right. Only some of you? Right. How many of you that, 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 that the enemy still holding on some things that you, you, that you want back? Right. I remember an old song that used to, we used to sing all the time is that I'm going back to the enemy's camp. Take back what they stole from me, right? We can't lose that. That song was birthed here. That song was birthed, that that revival, that revival of, man, I'm going to do whatever it takes to represent Jesus. If I have to go to people that accuse me and say things. Peter had to go back to the people that were accusing him. Hey, look this, look that. And he denied it. And then he went back a second time and preached the word of salvation. 3,000 people came. Thank you, Lord. If you want breakthroughs in your life, it's representing Jesus. It's not representing yourself. Don't get it twisted. It's not how good you sing. It's not how great you play. Doesn't how great you you deliver a message. Doesn't how doesn't matter how great you dress. If your heart is not right, then everything else it just conviction will keep you focused. I have this analogy. I heard this preaching, and uh, it was a preaching called "Season of Success." And he used this analogy from the Titanic. Has anybody watched the Titanic? It was my mom's favorite movie for like the longest time. And uh, one of the things is that there's a bunch of a uh, bunch of reasons why the Titanic sunk. And people, uh, people uh, who investigated it, would come up with these theories of why the Titanic sunk. And one of the reasons why the Titanic sunk was was brought to an attention was because of the lookout. Now the lookout, the lookout's job was to make sure that that there was nothing in front of them, right? And if there was anything in front of them, they would let the captain know. Um, but reports say that Second Officer David Blair, who held the key to the Titanic store of binoculars in his pocket, was transferred off the ship before it left for its um, maiden voyage from South Ampton and forgot to hand over the key to the officer who replaced him as the lookout. At a later inquiry into the sinking and lookout, a lookout on the Titanic said binoculars might have helped them spot and dodge the iceberg in time, but Blair kept the key 
as a memory of his nearness. Because this, that individual, what he's saying is that he, he forgot to give the key when he hopped off the ship to the binoculars that could have given them opportunity to see the iceberg from a distance. And so the one that was looking, who was to look out, was looking out just with his natural eyes. And he couldn't see. So that the, uh, the natural eye only could see so far. And so it couldn't see the iceberg. But they say that if he had the opportunity to get the, have the key to open up where the binoculars would be at, he would have been able to see the iceberg in time because the binoculars enhances the vision. And that's the same thing with God. Sometimes we walk with the we walk on our own natural vision and we don't search. We don't see certain things and we and we don't see certain uh, things that, that are heading our way. But when we put our, the, the eyes of the Lord, we begin to see certain things in our lives that that we that will better us, that will keep us from destruction, that will keep us from from getting hurt, from keep us from uh, 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 from backsliding. Can I get an amen? But instead of putting on the eyes of the Lord. We're looking through everything through the natural eye. And that's the reason why we get in trouble. It's because we're looking through the natural and not the supernatural. You have the key to unlock God's vision, God's direction to keep you focused. You have the key. But yet sometimes we hide the key. This evening, I could call the worship team up. Maybe Deanna could stay with the students. Did you guys get anything this evening? Let's all stand all over this place. You know how to play that. Let's all stand. We're going to sing glory this evening. Just lift up, our, lift up your hands all over this place. Bow your heads and close your eyes this evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. Just let the Spirit of God move this evening. God spoke to you this evening. Come to the altar. Just as they continue to sing. Come to the altar if you feel like God spoke to you. And the leadership, if they don't come to the altar, bring the altar to them. Begin to pray. Begin to intercede with them. That God will take them higher in this year of 2023. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
stretch your hands all over this place. Stretch all over this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't look around. Don't get distracted this evening. I really believe that there's a hunger for more of God. I believe that there is a new perspective. There is a new direction in the spirit of the third wave. That we don't want to just enter 2023 to do the same old same. We want to enter 2023 and we want to see results. We want to see salvation take place. We want to see breakthroughs happen. I believe that many of us want to see miracles take place within the third wave services. I, re I really believe it. I believe right now it's happening. I believe that there's change happening in people's hearts. The desire of the world is no longer. The desire of the world is not outweighing the desire of God no more. I'm here to tell you that you can be a young person and serve the Lord gave my life to the Lord when I was 19 years old. It wasn't hard. It was hard. But when you hold on to Jesus, it becomes easier. And when you surround yourself with people that have the same understanding, the same direction, the same hunger, it will only better you in the long run. So this evening, I'm going to pray and I'm going to close out this service as we just bow our heads and close our eyes. I pray, Father God, that you would just have your way, God. I pray that you'll begin to just move, God. I pray, God, that you will begin to just guide us and direct us this evening, God. I pray, God, that we will be a people that will represent you in the right way, God. That we will not allow the old man to, to step out, God. That we will learn how to tame ourselves. That we will learn how to die to self, God, and, and follow you, Lord. I pray for that individual that, that might, may not understand how to, God. I pray that that individual will surrender to you this evening, God. I pray that this message will seal the heart, be sealed in the hearts of your young people God let us begin to see more people giving their lives to to Jesus this evening God I pray as they make their way home God they will be changed they'll be transformed God they will not be the same in the name of Jesus we say amen and amen let's give God a hand clap of praise this evening. if you feel like man God just moved